op-ed today at HartmanReport.com is titled, Have Zoomers Ushered in the Fourth Turning? And I mean, this is this idea that there are, that each generation is, you know, 17 to 20 years long. Thomas Jefferson believed it was 19 years. He, he wrote about this in 17, I forget the year, um, uh, arguing, in fact, it was, uh, let's see here, 1789, that's what I thought, September 6, 1789. He was writing to uh, James Madison. He was working, he was in France at the time, he was writing for mort from mortality tables published by this French scientist, uh, Monsieur de Buffon, and in this, Jefferson was hypothesizing that every 19 years a new generation takes over and that a new generation should take over. Uh, he, he wrote this to James Madison, the father of the Constitution. He says, it may be pr pr proved that no society can make per a perpetual constitution or even a perpetual law. The earth belongs always to the living generation. They may manage it then and what proceeds from it and they play as they please during their unsuffruct. They are masters, too, of their own persons and consequently may govern them as they please. And then he lays out this theory, this 19-year period, and he says, or theory, he says, every constitution then and every law naturally expires at the end of 19 years. If it be enforced longer, it is an act of force and not of right. It may be said that the succeeding generation exercising, in fact, the power of repeal, this leaves them as free as if the Constitution or law had been expressly limited to 19 years only. Well, 208 years, 11 generations later, William Strauss and Neil Howe published their book, The Fourth Turning, What the Cycles of History Tell Us About America's Next Rendezvous with Destiny, in which they proposed that, you know, Jefferson was right. This is a brand new science in 1789, but Jefferson was right. But he got the number of years wrong. He said 19 years. Of course, lifespans were shorter back then. He said 19 years. Um, Strauss and Howe say it's about 20 years. And so about every 80 years, you have a fourth generation. Now, what's consequential about a fourth generation? Well, really, I think it's more about that 80-year period, that it takes 80 years for a great forgetting to happen. For example, in 1999, Republican Senator Phil Graham, Texas Senator Phil Graham, stood up on the floor of the House or of the United States Senate and said that it was time to repeal Glass-Steagall, the, the, the law that was passed in the 1930s that, that made it illegal for banks to use your checkbook savings money to gamble in the stock market. He said it's time to repeal Glass-Steagall because it has worked so well. We don't need it anymore. And sure enough, we repealed Glass-Steagall, and what did we get? We got the great Bush crash of 2008. Now, if anybody who had been in the United States Senate in 1930, or 1934 or 33, I guess it was, when Glass-Steagall was first passed, if, any of, if anybody from that generation had been in the United States Senate in 1999 when Phil Graham stood up and said that, he would have been laughed out of the body. I mean, that would have been it, right out of the building but they were all dead. And those who weren't dead were not in any position to, to you know, march up to the Capitol building. I mean, they were 90, 100 years old in a wheelchair. So, uh, or over 100 years old. So, how does this work? Well, it turns out that every 80 years, we forget the lessons of the previous 80 years, or we experience a uh, as a consequence of forgetting those lessons, we experience a crisis followed typically by a war. The crisis of 1771 was the Great Depression that year that caused the British government to start passing all these laws to increase taxes to get more revenue. The Townsend Act, the Port Act, the Tea Act, the, the Sugar Act. I mean, there's a whole bunch of them taxing pretty much everything in sight. The Stamp Act. That was all from 1771 to 1779. In 1850, and that led directly to the American Revolution. In 1856, you had the Great Panic of 1856. Abraham Lincoln had just cashed a, a check from one of the railroads, one of his clients, and, and uh, thank goodness he had. He turned it into cash because the bank went bankrupt a week later. The Great Crash of 18, or the Great Panic of 1856 led right to the Civil War. In the 1930s, we had the Republican Great Depression, which led right to World War II. Each one of those events 
you know, 80 years ago right now, well, actually 77 years ago right now, we ended World War II. 80 years before that, we ended the Civil War. 80 years before that, we ended the American Revolution. So what's happening next? Well, you know, it is possible that the generation coming up right now, the Zoomers, who, as I mentioned yesterday, delivered the election for Democrats. And I think this is like, a, you know, a really important one to remember is that the Zoomers went Democratic by 28 points, the Millennials by two points, Gen X went Republican by 11 points, and Boomers went Republican by 13 points. So we've got this generation coming up, and yeah, it's possible that we could have a depression followed by a war. The Republicans are saying, oh yeah, we're going to crash the economy, we're going to hold the debt ceiling hostage to force Democrats to cut Social Security. And we'll see. And, you know, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, China's increasing belligerence around Taiwan, those things could lead to wars that drag the United States in. So we could see a repeat of the previous three cycles, depression followed by war. But I would argue, and I argue in today's piece at Hartman Report, that Zoomers, this generation that's coming up right now, 18 to 30 year olds, they are looking at actual crises. They don't, they don't need the Republicans to create a crisis and they don't need you know, Putin and, and Xi to start a war. They've got a, a crisis on their hands, the, the global warming crisis, which is right now killing thousands of Americans every year and leaving tens of thousands of Americans homeless every year. And within a decade or two, it's gonna be killing hundreds of thousands of Americans every year and leaving millions homeless. They've got this crisis on their hands, you know, that they're inheriting. I'll be long dead when this stuff ha when, it, when it really gets bad in 20, 30 years from now. In all probability, I'll be long dead. But the Zoomers are looking at, hey, this is, you know, they're gonna be hitting their 50s. They realize they've got to do something about that. So you've got climate change, a major crisis that the Zoomers are dealing with or are going to face. You've got America now awash in guns, 120 guns for every 100 people, up from 20 guns for every 100 when Reagan came into office. So that the leading cause of death among children right now is gunfire. We're the only country in the world where this is true. We're the only country in the world that inflicts uh, active shooter drills on our children in schools and traumatizes them. Our biosphere is shredded. The insect apocalypse is starving our bird populations and threatening our food supply. Students in America, and this is unique to the United States, no other country in the world has student debt. But students in the United States are sitting on nearly $2 trillion worth of debt. Young families risk homelessness if hit with a mere $1,000 unexpected expense. Tens of millions of Americans have no meaningful access to health care. Another crisis, another crisis. Multiple states led by Florida, Georgia, and Texas have enacted Jim Crow voting strategies to, to cut democracy and, and prevent young people and, and uh, minorities from voting. And of course, you've got billionaire funded or owned think tanks, social media, networks of radio and television stations that are daily pumping out a stream of lies, disinformation, misinformation, hate, designed to turn Americans against each other solely so they can claim more tax cuts and corporate deregulation and vast profits. So I'm hypothesizing, and I'd love, love to hear your take on this. And by the way, I don't think this is limited to the United States, from Greta Thunberg to, and her American allies to Maxwell Frost, who just, you know, 25 years old, just won a seat in the U.S. House of Representatives, to the young women of Iran and the soldiers of Ukraine. This generation coming up today across much of the world is taking on crises they had no hand in creating. I think the fourth turning has commenced. As Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez tweeted yesterday, quote, the role of young people in this election cannot be understated. Turnout delivered in, on, many, on, uh, on many of these races. By 2024, millennials and Gen Z voters will outnumber voters who are baby boomers and older, older 45 to 25. We are beginning to see the political impacts of that generational shift. And she is absolutely right.